do you see many fallacies that people use uh, in order to prove or demonstrate the existence of God? Well, they must all, all be fallacious because there is no God. <laughs> it's whether you can detect the fallacy easily enough. Um, I mean, I suppose a scientist would think of um, a first cause as a very powerful argument for, um, for the existence of God. Um, you know, where did it all come from? Who started it off? Um, and if this Big Bang was not the primordial Big Bang, was there a Big Bang <laughs> long, much further back in time that he did set off and so on? Um, a terribly difficult question. Um, but I think that any question that is given the answer, well, God must have done it, is an abnegation of the intellect. Uh, it really is, it sounds as though it's a positive statement, but in fact, it's a it's a camouflage of ignorance and so it means that people have stopped thinking and if you are confronted with the question of a first cause where the universe come from comes from don't just slip onto the feather bed of saying god did it because that's meaningless totally utterly meaningless what scientists have got to do is to trace causes back to their origin and find a mathematical theory of the emergence of the universe. I hope that that will prove possible. There is no evidence yet that it will not prove possible. And anyone, any scientist who says that it is impossible to account for the emergence of the universe from nothing without intervention is um, is not being a real scientist, is, is just too pessimistic. And they don't know. I mean, they've got thousands of scientists beavering away with cosmology, trying to get back to that last moment. Um, it'd be wonderful when they get there. We have what is called God of the gaps, that yes. every time something is not understood. Yeah, it's abnegation of the intellect. But, and, and we've seen it occur yes. in, in many different stages. Yeah, every time it occurs, it's abnegation of the intellect. So take that God of the gap, take it out of your sentence and say abnegation of the intellect. That's what it is. It's people giving up trying to think and using a, a kind of a spell so, uh, that's all it is. I mean, it's, it's, it's just a spell. Why? That you've got to get from point A to point B in an argument. You've got a gap. So you, you weave a spell. You cast a spell and you're there. <laughs> and, and you call it God. You don't call it a spell. It could be the case, and theoretical models give some credence to it, that ours is not the only universe. And if there is more than one universe, then there is no obvious reason why there is not an infinite number of universes. Why stop at two? Why stop at 42? It could be that all those universes have the same mix of fundamental constants, each one allowing life. Or it could be that the fundamental constants take random values, and it is inevitable that one, or even an infinity of them, permit the emergence of life. No design appears to be necessary, and an argument that posits an essential designer god is lazy rather than convincing. There is currently no need for a designer god. Thirdly, purpose. Philosoph philosophers and their obfuscating cousins, their theologians, has puzzled for centuries over the purpose of the universe. Why did God make it? Boredom with absolutely nothing? Anxious for admirers? Keen that we should have the pleasures and the pains of existence? The trouble is, there is absolutely no evidence that the universe has any purpose whatsoever. This, like causality, is an extrapolation of puny human experience to an inappropriate cosmic scale. Each of us, of course, has purposes of various kinds. And so surely, they say, the universe has one too. Science proceeds to elucidate the workings of the world without invoking purpose and finds not one jot of evidence for it. In fact, in my view, there is a grandeur in an entity as great as a universe just hanging there.
wholly without purpose. And if there is no purpose, there is no need to posit a purpose for God. Religions undermine respect for evidence. Religions harm societies by disfavoring evidence in favor, in favor of faith, preferring mass hysteria, superstition, priestly authority, and the propagation of beliefs by cultural conditioning over controlled, careful, circumspect, public, unbiased inspection. If you consider that introspection and submission to authority mark the path to understanding, then vote against the motion. If instead you consider that truth is not arrived at by fanning the flames of a crowd's opinion, but by circumspect public scrutiny, then vote for the motion. Take it. Within Islam, there is a procedure to alter the text according to modern society, which relies on logical analogies that are drawn from the real world and a logical process that is followed to reach to conclusion. <coughs> How then does it block logical interpretation of the world around us? Thank you. All religions pride themselves on developing analogies, normally after the truth has been discovered by scientists. <laughs> <laughs> Fourthly, or maybe 18thly, I've lost count, um, religions being founded on opinion rather than fact propagate dangerous <laughs> absurdities. Those absurdities quench individual aspiration and can, can encourage social harm. Take Buddhism, for instance, which propagates the absurdity of multiple, indeed infinite reincarnations, the progressive acquisition of enlightenment, and the danger of slipping back next time and becoming a toad, or even worse, a woman. <laughs> Take Islam and its encouragement of terror and martyrdom by the false promise of a voluptuous afterlife. Religions that promise future bliss in a non-existent afterlife inhibit an individual's fulfillment in this one and only life. If you consider that it is politically appropriate to exercise crowd control by the peddling of false promises, then vote against the motion. If you consider it harmful to society to be deceitful and cultural immoral to peddle falsehoods, then vote for it. Fifthly, religions propagate fake questions and thereby distract attention from the pursuit of real understanding. When you reflect on the kinds of questions that religion regards as peculiarly its own and denies that rational thought can elucidate them, they turn out to be unsubstantiated extrapolations from human experience or fruits of the inability of a person to come to terms with the prospect of his own annihilation. If you consider it fruitful to consider questions for which there is no evidence, then vote against the motion. If instead you consider that attention should be confined to questions of existence for which there is actual evidence, then vote for the motion. We on this side, and I think I can speak for um, my colleagues, accept that religions often have a benign, comforting function uh, through, of course, the propagation of falsehood and have inspired great art at, of course, the cost of much blood. But we prefer honesty and its bedfellow rationality. So if you prefer to live in a society where the governance and personal deportment are founded on rational decision-making, on evidence, and not on culturally conditioned vagaries of sometimes conflicting faiths, then I urge you to vote for the motion. Religion is really not merely the opium of the people. It undeniably undermines the intellect 
and rationality, and thereby harms society at its core.